Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. It's uh, Thursday, October 18th, 7 p.m. <coughs> Deerfield offices. Um, first thing I'd like to do is note the members present, Rich, Bernie, myself, Kathy, and Bob. Um, first thing we need to do is review the minutes, two sets of minutes from two prior meetings. If everybody got a chance to look at those minutes, review them, any changes necessary? Everything okay, Bob, with the minutes? I looked them over when I got the email. I didn't notice anything that appeared to be wrong. Okay. Make a motion to accept the two minutes. Um, two separate minutes reports from the last two meetings. Was that one? May 3rd and September 20th. Excuse me, we're closing up that door. Do you want us to lock the door or leave it open? Well, you got to leave it open because okay. uh, okay. there's okay. All right, just so is where I'm responsible. Turn Sorry about that. The, the, the dates for the minutes that we're voting to accept are from September 20th of 2018 and May 3rd. 2018. All those who are. Right. Yes. And they have to separate it. Which one were you? I was not at you. the main meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So I make a motion that we accept the May 3rd, 2018 minutes. My second motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. that we accept the minutes for the September 20th, 2018 meeting. Second the motion. All those in favor? Opposed? Any old business? Uh, one more member to note present, Adam Sokolowski. Didn't mention him before. So we'll go right to the um, hearing notice. Fred and Rosalita <coughs> Berwick and Carl and Angela Berwick, co-owners of 194 Lower Road, Deerfield, Mass. The applicants request consideration for special use permit for a 2,706 square foot four room bed and breakfast at 194 Lower Road to be owner occupied and in compliance with all building, health and fire codes. So um, I would just like to um, give everybody an overview of the, the order we're gonna try to follow. Um, first with the applicants, we'll um, allow them to speak to add anything that they would like to. Uh, secondly, anybody in public who's in favor? Um, third, any public opposed? Uh, then the board will discuss and ask questions. Um, and at that point, I will let the applicant know that if there is any um, doubt, they can withdraw their request without prejudice. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll vote on the um, the, um, the, the correspondence here. The permit. The permit. Okay. Now the, um, the basic rules of the meeting, anybody wanting to speak uh, will be recognized by the chair, that, that side. Um, come to the microphone, state your name and address. All remarks will be made through the chair with your name and address stated, one person at a time and all comments need to be respectful. Okay. Frank, one, yes. one small item. Mm -hmm. You have the book that was submitted. Yes. Going to the record. Mm -hmm. and if everybody's read the book, mm -hmm. I believe there's a statement in there about three bedrooms. Yes. yes. So when he comes forward. Yep. So that has to be clarified. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. 
Yes. Um, I think it's an amended application. Mm -hmm. Okay. It probably should be signed by the petitioners. Okay. So we get it as part of the record. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 All right. Would you like to yeah. open? Yeah, this is I, uh, this is Rose Peter Berwick. Rose Peter Berwick, yeah. Mm -hmm. My husband um, apologizes. Mm -hmm. He has um, health problems, so he's, yeah, he can't okay. be here. Thank you for coming. But he's on call. <laughs> okay. George Berwick, and this is my son, Klaus. Okay. Um, yes, I wanted to speak to the first point that Dick brought up is that it is an amended application. Okay. Uh, we re re reviewed the room count based on the uh, on the bylaws. Uh, what we, I guess, where we were coming from, which we misread and clarified with uh, Richard, uh, was the um, we were going by the end of the bylaws. There's a definition section where it lists uh, bed and breakfast as a definition, which has six or more rooms. In the actual bylaw, it doesn't refer to it as, a, as, as bed and breakfast or transient op occupants. It talks about it as borders. And so we didn't look at that section as bed and breakfast. Having reviewed that with Richard and myself, <coughs> um, we wanted to reapply with it being in the correct number of being two to um, six um, uh, uh, borders um, by the occupants. And so the applicants be my parents and the orders being the two to six. Um, so we're asking for a three room bed and breakfast to reduce the down by one room and a four room house. So one room being occupied. And one room by us and then three. And uh, yeah, and not the bed and breakfast would not be all year round, seven days a week, but just, you know, weekends and then sometimes during the summers. Because we would love to do it, we would mm -hmm. uh, enjoy doing it. We have a lot of friends, but uh, mm -hmm. in our age, we don't want to run this thing um, all year long. So, okay. um, as outlined in the uh, from our previous meeting, we basically went through <coughs> and tried to answer all the questions that were proposed by the board, <laughs> um, and so we tried to outline them point by point in the. Um, in our narrative and also in the different um, questions that were asked basically and documents that were required. So. Yeah, and I spent also some time, 145 pages, and I got to know the rules and regulations. Um, we live in Claremont, that's a historical city, and even if we remove a tree, we have to go to the city and get for, uh, ask for approval. So I appreciate um, the concern you have for the area. And uh, so you love, live in Claremont? Love it. Yeah, in California. Oh, California. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. moving over here. Yeah. So um, it's it's a historical city, and you know, and uh, so Deerfield is uh, really a very nice place, and honor the um, environmental concerns you have. Are used to it. And support it fully. So. Well, like um, Richard indicated on the application, or Bob did, <coughs> you want to make a change? Yes. Would, would you be able to do that and yeah. initial it? And date it. And date it, thank you. Yeah. Do you want to buy a signature? Yeah. Do you want me to sign at the bottom again? Or? Yes. Okay. Need a signature. Yeah, on one of these books here. I need a signature. Thank you. Turn the lights back on. I 
Jewish. Huh? I guess for us, it was more just answering questions. So I feel like we delivered a presentation before the narrative. You feel like basically. an exam. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you never know what kind of okay. questions they are. We've all reviewed the, the um, this. You, you yeah, I pulled it up from Ms. Ms. Kroll okay. and uh, okay. had the opportunity to go through yep. it uh, ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. Uh, Frank, yep. the gentleman in the rear would like you guys to speak yeah. up a little louder. Okay. Yeah. Would you please ask the respondents to speak up so that we can hear them? I will. Thank you. I will. Okay, do you have anything else to to add? Um, I don't think so. I mean, what we basically have been spending time doing is just familiarizing ourselves more with the property. Mm -hmm. uh, we went and um, reviewed um, the uh, previous um, board meeting with Richard. We spent quite a bit of time with me, about two hours, <laughs> mm -hmm. going over just details about uh, the past hearing just so I understood the bylaws a little bit better. Um, and then we also spent some time just researching the um, prior paperwork on 194 so that we understood the, the, the past, uh, yeah. we'll familiarize ourselves yeah. more with the history of the, of the property. Um, the, there was a question about the driveway, um, mm -hmm. how that came to be to be 600 feet and all this other mm -hmm. details. And so I think we're more it's familiar It's interesting now. for me too to find out the uh, whole history of uh, you know, the, the concerns and uh, preservation, because preservation is something important, so it was addressed and, and settled, so. Good. Okay. So I don't know if there's much more to add. I think it's mainly your questions. Your questions, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, at this point, thank you. Um, <coughs> I'll ask if there's any residents that uh, would like to speak in favor of the bed and breakfast proposal. No, I'll speak on behalf of myself and my husband also. Rita Detweiler, I live at 200 Lower Road, okay. and we're not opposed to it. Okay. We really are in favor of it. Um, we've had some opportunity to speak with George over the fence, and he came, spoke in our living room, and met you. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think we'd like some clarification about what it means to be owner-occupied, mm -hmm. uh, because I think that there, you know, there can be several owners to a home, mm -hmm. um, but a person only has one primary residence. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to have that clarified as an owner-occupied, meaning that this is an individual's primary residence, mm -hmm. implying that they spend time there, they sleep there, they have their clothes there, they are on the voting rolls in the town. Um, and then also, is it such that, since it is owner-occupied, is it only available to be rented out when that owner is in residence? Mm -hmm. So those are the questions I would hope that the board would clarify okay. for us. Okay. Yes. When Kathy has a floor plan of the house, mm -hmm. you might request them to mark which rooms are available for rental. Right, when we get down to our clarification. To clarify the rental and which rooms are being rented. Okay. Any other neighbors in favor? Or I neutral? I mean, we'll be Well, I was just going to say, Luann Simmons, to to Lower Road. I'm not opposed. Mm -hmm. I'm not in favor, necessarily. I'm, I am kind of neutral. Um, what I just wanted to to discuss was, and you in your opening remark, your opening remarks, you referred to this permit as special permit or special use permit. Mm -hmm. So my concern is just that, with that, knowing that it's a special use permit, I just would hope the board would consider um, adding specific guidelines, not just a general bed and breakfast, bed and, bed and breakfast permit, but guidelines. And I can give you an example of what I'm talking about. And it's, this is just an example in my head that, I'm, that I came up with. So say for instance, a permit, general permit is given. It's a three bedroom bed and breakfast. Um, there's gonna be two people living there. There can be six people staying there. Um, that's all great. Um, just say for instance, there's six people that want to stay there and there's a special thing they want to celebrate. So the six people, you know, are going to stay there for the weekend, but now they're going to invite maybe 20 of their closest friends or family and um, just to have a gathering there in this beautiful spot, which it's a beautiful spot, you know, for the day. 
And there's the field we talked about that has, has historical preservation mm -hmm. because of what's buried there. And um, it was mentioned that as far, I, I'm sorry, I believe you said, as far as you knew, the only thing that you couldn't do on that property is dig a couple feet or something. Yeah, it, feet. So I wasn't sure if, if that, you know, the do's and don'ts of that property could be looked into closer. But let's just say, for instance, okay, a party tent is erected mm. on the feet in the field. Well, there's no digging, so there's no nothing bad happening. You're not doing the wrong thing, but you just stakes being pounded in. So a party tent goes up, some tables, some chairs. Twenty of my closest friends come over. We happen to mention that you know we are, do have access to the river. So if you want to bring your kayak or canoe. Go ahead, you know, we'll just walk down the path, down to the water, and, you know, have a good old time. And, and, and it's just, and it's an, a, a nice gathering, an innocent gathering. No rules being broken, because it's a general permit. Um, so, and just knowing that, you know, maybe something like that could happen time and time again, it would change the atmosphere of the neighborhood. Um, nobody's breaking any rules, because come nighttime, Everybody goes home, except the six people that are staying there, or however many, and, and everything's back to normal. But just a thought of something that things can domino into if there's no specific guidelines of, you can only have this many people on the property at a time, you can have this many cars at a time, you can blah, blah, blah. And I would just like to have some more clarification of the field that is protected and besides, is there anything other than the digging, how protected should it be? Okay. So that's just my concern. If you could just <coughs> well, consider um, those things I, and put specific I think guidelines. I, I, think I can yeah. piece. <coughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. May I appreciate your, uh, your comments? Yeah. Thank you. I, I think I can appease you of all of your worries because I don't think we're ever going to allow Sir? any kind of, you know, Joe Vesley, 191 Wait. Lower Road. Hi, Joe. Uh, I just wonder if the driveway will be used to go down to the bottom of that piece of property mm -hmm. and uh, what would the, the use, how, how would that be used? And uh, it just seems to me that <coughs> it has been looked into. I, I have no particular suggestions, but I know it can be a dangerous thing because you can't go halfway down the thing and then come up again unless you are a very careful back driver. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that is the only, the only problem I can see. About Your only concern is the driveway. Okay. okay. Bruce? Uh, Bruce St. Peter's. Uh, I'm neither opposed nor support it. Uh, a couple questions I do have, and I just saw the book for two minutes, and so you kind of help to help me with it. <coughs> I saw some mention of renting up to six people, mm -hmm. and I guess <coughs> I don't understand the bylaws because the way I'm reading them, anything over two people becomes a boarding house. In which case, boarding houses are specifically prohibited mm -hmm. in a residential agricultural uh, um, zone, zone area. Yeah. And I know it was brought up about some other bed and breakfasts at the last month's meeting. I checked on those. Those are in commercial districts. They are not in residential agricultural districts. So I guess that would be my one thing is, uh, there again, to what I'm reading, um, you know, anything more than renting to two persons becomes a boarding house. Okay. So I would like mm -hmm. to get that clarified as well. Okay. In which case that would not allow them to have the... Uh, uh, Three rooms. Well, anything over two people. Right. They would not be able to rent to six. The way I'm reading it. But okay. And I'd like some clarification if possible. Yeah, Thank you. I read. Yeah. I read. You see it, Rich? I mean, I, um, anybody else um, <laughs> for or against or any other comments in general? Yes, Reed. I'm sorry, one other last thing around the use of the field. Is parking at all allowed on the field? Because, again, that was part of what could potentially develop. 
and there are grave sites throughout that area. Uh, so again, um, I think that should be clarified if there's any parking at all allowed on the field. Okay. Let, let me clarify that. This petition is for a bed and breakfast. Right. There's nothing to do with environmental, nothing to do with Indian bones buried or parking on top of the bones, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? That really shouldn't be part of the consideration. Okay. The consideration is, is the driveway adequate and the number of parking spaces in the driveway? Okay. The, I can tell you this for a fact. Historically, I'm the only person left alive <laughs> that knows where those bones are buried. Right. And whose lot there are, because I go back 50 years on that piece of property because I took some of that gravel out of there when I was building a house. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. I know exactly where everything is buried. I know exactly where the skeletons are, so to speak. Okay, So it's really not part of their consideration. I think your answer or questions related to uses of the property for people yes, right, okay. clarifies it. But there's no restrictions on lining cars up in their driveway. And so, thank you. Thanks, Richard. Okay, if nobody else has any comments or concerns or questions, um, this time the board will discuss <coughs> and try to answer <coughs> some of the <coughs> concerns and questions and talk amongst ourselves here. Okay. Uh, I have a question, Frank. Oh. Do you own any other properties around here like this? I'm sorry? Do you own any other properties that you use in this manner? No. Well, not in my, not my in personally, Deerfield. not yeah. in Deerfield. I have uh, a bed and breakfast in Hatfield. Okay. Anywhere else? I have a, um, a place up in Greenfield. Bed and breakfast? Yes. Yeah. Anywhere else? That's it? No. So you've got two. You have two. I have two, yes. That's why when my parents wanted to start one, I said, Yeah, that, uh, that's not anything with him, right? Yeah. What do you, what are you getting at? What am I getting at? Um, you've got on your property, you've got two, four names, correct? Yeah. Okay. So he's going to be a part owner, correct? Yeah. So that means um, he would be allowed to be in there and running this when you're not here. Or helping when I'm here. Or helping when you're here, but yeah. what about when you're not here? Um, well, we wouldn't rent when I'm not here. That, that, you just answered my question. It's, so, just, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, gonna, it's always going to be yeah. when you so, and or I'm here. Fred. Yeah, when and this, here. Is, this is answering your question, too. You know, I'm not going to invite tons of people and put up tents uh, to party. <laughs> so the place is not going to be rented. Okay, okay, you have to talk to the board. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I wouldn't rent it, you know, uh, inviting people and having tents up and having yeah. parties there. I mean, that's so to clarify, if you're not in Deerfield at, at that residence, you're not going to have a, any guests there if you're not there. Okay. Probably Nobody, your your son will be. No, you're saying probably not. No, well, yeah. we can we can put that as a condition yeah. in our because permit. the last meeting we had, your son said he was going to be there. That's why I'm asking the question. Mm -hmm. And there's four names on it. And I brought up the fact that if you allow four, mm -hmm. you could allow six or you could allow ten. So you've got a rotation of people in there that would be occupancy, and it says owner occupied business. Mm -hmm. My interpretation means that the owner has to be there. Mm -hmm. To run it as their primary residence, yeah, as their primary residence, you know, and I think it becomes an enforcement nightmare. Yes, for our enforcement agent and the neighbors. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking to the board. You know, I, uh, I thought about this after the last meeting for some time, and I thought about if I wanted to live next door to this, and I thought about uh, three guests with three cars, and I thought about holiday weekends because that's when you're going to make your money, and I thought about this as a purchase property as a commercial investment. It's clear that the applicant is in business to make money and he has two successful bed and breakfasts and this is going to be the third. And we're going to have three people, six people coming in with three cars on Friday afternoon. We're going to drop off their bags. He's going to come to help his parents, help them get set up. Then he's going to leave and then he's going to come back and they're going to go to dinner in Greenfield or Deerfield and then they're going to come back and then they're going to leave and come back again. 
and then you know they may have a small gathering or their kids might be at a private school and they want to bring their kids and their friends over to go swimming in the river and I just think you know and he does point out in his application here or his ad additional uh, information provided um, about Airbnb and I think that that's you know I looked for myself yeah there's some people renting in Deerfield and I think that that's an enforcement issue with with our enforcement agent it's not you know a ZBA issue um, just because some people may be renting a room or two and didn't come to us I mean I think the right place for something this size with this with three rooms or more is in a commercial district not uh, not in a residential agricultural district so um, I'm, what's, I'm all, the, what's the threshold then in your mind a threshold for me would be one person that only owns one residence and is renting one room I can see that I can't I cannot see I can see people this is an opportunity to make money let's buy a four bedroom house close to an area that we know there's a high demand for uh, rooms and we're going to use it as an investment property I mean I can see it happening more and more and I don't think that we should have any rental bread and breakfasts in residential uh, agricultural districts I just I'm um, I don't you know the neighbors may change uh, you know right now the neighbors are neutral some seem supportive some some not uh, I just can't uh, I can't support this in uh, in that community but uh, may I say something um, sure. sure this is sure. a house that my husband and I buy this is our home mm -hmm. and it's not a kind of a income um, producing kind of business. That's not how I look at it. And I, I'm offended basically by you, you know, throwing this at me, thinking that I'm buying a house and having parties and trying to make a lot of money. I'm buying a house, or we buying a house, my husband and I, to be close to our children, to be close to our grandchildren. It's closer also to Germany because I'm still flying back to Germany. And um, it's my house that I'm renting one or two rooms at. It's not that anybody can come in there and trash it or, uh, you know, what I understand, you know, would you do that? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't do that. Ma'am. All of you who own houses, you know, you wouldn't just get anybody in and say, you know, I'm making money, I'm, I'm charging so they can come in and have parties and trash my place. It's my house that I thought I can share with my friends and sometimes with people who would like to have a place to stay over a weekend. Um, but, you know, you're treating this really like this is an enterprise, this is for, you know, through the back road, something, so he has two businesses and now so he's, you know, this is up front or something and this is, it's not, it's not the case, and so I would like to clarify that, okay. that uh, it's a personal, it's a home. I'm having right now a shipment of my own furniture from Germany coming in because I want to make it my home. And I'm not going to share it with Kriti and Kriti and anybody who comes on the road and pays me 200 bucks for a weekend. This is not the intent. Uh, Ma'am, I'm not uh, having any judgment upon, <coughs> upon what guests you may have or how they may arrive or that they're going to make noise. Just the fear, it's just the mere fact of multiple vehicles going in and out in and of itself is going to change the neighborhood, in my opinion. Well, I, to, I'm not going to have a debate with you, ma'am. This is where I stand, I and nothing that you say yeah. is going to change my opinion yeah, no, on where I, I stand yeah, on it. I don't so. understand. I don't understand you, and I see your point. Um, but I was driving down that road today or, and yesterday, and there were big trucks coming my way, and I had to just move over all the way in order to get that big truck by. Um, that is more noise and more disturbance than a personal car who comes down the road on the weekend. So. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Uh, yeah, did you have the minutes of when we discussed this about who was going to be in the house? Because we're asking questions because your son made comments that when he when you weren't going to be here, that he was going to take care of it. So when the questions we're asking are, are fundamental questions that were put forward by your son at the meeting. And in all honesty, we need to look at those because my understanding is it's owner-run. Okay. 
That means not they anyone. Own their occupied. Right, and so that's not what we had the last time. So we're at, we're trying to clarify questions here about who is going to be there and what goes on. But that's not what was told to us. Is it mentioned in here, Frank? Um, Can I speak real quick? Yeah. I, uh, to clarify, um, I felt a little bit off guard last time because I was not prepared based on all the questioning. I was not. I was uh, coming into a different impression of what we were supposed to be discussing, so I did not come in prepared. That's why I said I would have my mother come, and that way she could clarify for you. She's going to be submitting homestead to the property, um, so uh, she's going to register home her homestead here, um, and then I mean, basically start transferring all her. Okay, then another question I have here is on this uh, second page. Clarification of uh, owner occupied by six. So I uh, I am I'm concerned because uh, you already consulted a lawyer on this. Correct. Yeah. Well, this was a this was a point that you brought up, and yeah. so we just wanted clarification because we didn't understand. Okay. When I talked to your clarification is different than the one that I have. Okay. Okay. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, my understanding of this is only two people, not six people, not six. And if you have one person in the house, you're still only going to have two people is uh, in the house, not not four, not five, two. That's what your your lawyer is saying that you can have up to. Um, well, doesn't it read that way? Not in my interpretation, it doesn't. Not in our well, maybe, bylaws. Maybe that requires some clarification then, because that also changes the nature of the application. Because that's why we right. amended the application. Right. Because in the first statement. Um, Way, the way I read it after um, Richard and I went over it was the renting of rooms and furnishing uh, to board or of board to no more than two persons in a single family dwelling by the owner. All right, yeah. So two persons by, therefore, shall be permitted as accessory use. So it's just a simple accessory use, whereas the renting of rooms and or furnishings of board to more than two persons, but not more than six persons in a single family dwelling by the owner occupant, therefore shall be deemed a boarding house, subject to provisions of section of this section. So my husband and I are good we're, we're confused as, because the, the whole section here speaks of borders. It starts with borders and says boarding house. There's nothing about bed and breakfast in this whole section. However, this is the point that we were discussing the last time we had the meeting, was that this was going to govern a bed and breakfast. So the first statement, of borders and the single family dwelling has nothing to do with that. I think we need to look into Bruce St. Peter's um, question about the agricultural slash residential mm -hmm. um, concern about how many people can be. Uh, do you have any uh, information on that, Rick? Let me clarify something to start with. Okay. You're asking for three bedrooms. And I'll clarify, I'll start with the bedrooms. I looked at the size of the bedrooms. Each bedroom allows two people, okay? And I'll just point this out. You're probably never going to see a person in a bed and breakfast one, mm -hmm. okay? So you have to understand whatever bedrooms <coughs> you allow, one, two, or three, there's going to be two people. Now you can, you must restrict it to two people maximum because of room size, mm -hmm. okay? Per room, okay? You can restrict people that are renting these rooms from having people on the premises other than them. You can restrict parties, tents, the river, etc., etc. You can make all those restrictions. Okay? In the condition of a permit. Condition of the permit. Right. Right. You can make the condition of the permit that the two husband and wives. Okay, I'll clear it. You understand where I'm mm -hmm. going with yes. that? Yep. They'd be present at all times and nothing can be rented unless they're there. You can add that condition, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the zoning bylaws are very, very difficult to interpret. Yeah. Somebody could go to a bed and breakfast and stay there more than 30 days and be classified as a boarder, okay? You don't know how long they're going to stay. They may not stay for just a weekend. They may stay for a month. They may stay for two months. Turns into a boarding house, okay? 
boarding houses usually have more than breakfast. Another question that wasn't asked is, who is going to do... Not yet, at least. You were going to ask yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll let you ask it. Right. Well, okay. keep, keep going, though. <laughs> you want me to finish? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should clarify who's going to clean the rooms. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, there's no employees allowed to be hired to come onto the premises because then that throws it into a home business category, which is a different permit. Uh, going back and forth about the uh, whether six people are allowed or eight people or whatever, I, I personally think it's a moot question. I think the question is, does this qualify for a bed and breakfast? And do you want one, two, or three rooms? Uh, do you want a temporary one? The other question that hasn't been brought up or the point that I'm going to make with this is that once you issue a bed and breakfast without conditions it goes with the property okay so for example if your husband and wife are issued a bed and breakfast permit and they leave move go someplace else even though they still own the house if they don't own or occupy it they could sell that house as the bed and breakfast that you allow. Well, we put a condition that would say. You already, we've already had that circumstance happen where somebody passed on their bed and breakfast permit when they said they weren't going to do it. Okay. So these are all the conditions you probably should be discussing when you when you really have the meeting closed. Okay, can I have uh, can I have another question? You're yeah. the Board of Health Inspector, yeah. correct? Yes. Who's in charge of the uh, a food food situation since okay. you have to have a permit to serve food, I believe, don't you? Yeah. No problem. So, so they have to produce a serve safe certificate for. for so that means in the home, if you have they a have to have a kitchen inspected. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is no building inspection as per se that's required, okay? You can make it a requirement that any bed and breakfast is inspected once a year or make sure the smoke detectors haven't been disconnected, make sure the handrails are in the house. You can make that condition. By the Board of Health or the building inspector. Either or. Yeah. Yes. Can, can I ask a question? My question is, is how do you police something like this though? Very difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is all great, but yeah. I mean, how do you police this? It's almost impossible. Yeah, that's my concern. And the point I mean, about the, the Airbnbs? Yeah. An Airbnb is a bed and breakfast. I don't care. It you is a bed any, breakfast. You yes. can attach any name you want to it. You right. can call a bed and breakfast and right. it's the advertisement. Right. The Airbnb is just an advertisement right. for a bed and breakfast. Now, I'll clarify this for you. Right now, we're short a permanent building inspector, okay? Our previous building inspector was just about ready to clamp down on some Airbnbs, okay? Yeah. So, that's it. And this was our concern. We don't want to do anything behind, you know, sort of sneaky and pretend, mm -hmm. and those are family members. So, so we want to do it right. Okay. We want to do it legally. Right. And um, basically, I didn't expect this kind of reaction to to my moving our moving here and enjoying the area and enjoying the land and enjoying the house and all of a sudden you know this is here for money making purposes or something so um, it's, this house is not bought as a BNB this house is bought as a family owned occupied whatever you call it business uh, house and to rent out a room you know once in a while uh, during the summer maybe and, and you know whatever we decide it's, it's our decision when we want to do this and it's not this kind of money making the thing that you that you're portraying here so that's sort of surprising to me yes could I ask for uh, repetition of what was explained about does the permit go to the people or to the house and can that be passed on? Because I need to be sure I understand that because that would be very... <coughs> it's um, very sure. simple. 
Okay. If this board grants a beard and breakfast permit and they do not make the condition that it must be owner occupier and it's non transferable and recorded at the register of deeds as such, uh -huh. then when they sell the property, they can sell it as a bed and breakfast. But the board could make those restrictions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Right, we have, yes. Actually, okay. I was advised by our town council to advise the board to do that every time so it didn't get passed on as a business business. Right, right. Because somebody could come along and sell the bed and breakfast for right, exactly. a potential business and become permanent. Right. Thanks, Richard. Bob Grandfather. I just want to point out the code uh, does not allow a boarding house in a residential agricultural area. Uh, they are allowed by special permit in the CRV issue, but they're not allowed in the, uh, according to this, the Catholic sort of highlighted. So. So that takes the board, the boarding house and just don't get used to Okay, if there's no other questions or concerns, I'll close mm -hmm. the meeting so that we can discuss amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. One more? I just want okay. to be sure that it's clarified what it means by owner occupy, that it's their primary residence mm -hmm. as established by and voting and everything else. Right. We intend to do okay. that. Yeah. Bruce? One other quick question yeah. is is I, I, I do not think the zoning issue should be minimized by any circumstances mm -hmm. because if uh, uh, if it is not allowed in a residential agricultural that should not be minimized because a precedent will be set mm -hmm. and will open up a future can of worms. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Thanks Bruce. The Thank precedent you. has already been set. May I ask where? River Road. Right, because uh, he had mentioned uh, uh, two, two on Lower Road, which are both in, in commercial zones. Yeah, River Road, it's been set on River Road. So, uh, five or six years ago. How far up? What numbers? 500 area. I thought that I thought that was that's not commercial. Or six hundred area. No, definitely. No, not. There, there's another. There's a one room that's in the seven hundred. There's there's two bed and breakfasts on River Road. Yeah, two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> Yeah, but two mm -hmm. lefts make a right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you. else? Okay, at this time we'd like to talk amongst ourselves and make a decision. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yes? They need to realize that it takes four affirmative votes. Speak up so mm -hmm. everybody can hear you. It takes four affirmative votes to pass mm -hmm. it. Right. And if right. they would like to withdraw their application yep. without prejudice, yep. now is the time. Yeah. Well, after, and we I, after we discuss, I, right. I intend to, I intend to say that I mentioned. Just to clarify a point, mm -hmm. you're voting on three bedrooms right now. Correct. Okay. Correct. They get denied three bedrooms. They can't come back for two years with another application, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm just explaining this for yeah. your benefit. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, you're, if you get denied for three, you can't come back for two years. If any time you could step forward and change it, the number, okay, if you feel uncomfortable, or you can withdraw and refile. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my question, and we, we discussed this in our meeting, if I can speak to that. Sure. Um, is that um, was it with regards to that statement about the borders? Maybe I could direct that at you. What does that section mean? Because that really determines the number of rooms that we're requesting. Because really, it's it's very ambiguous. I don't understand between the definition that's provided at the end of the bylaws and on that on that with regards to that one section. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. And with that confusion, I don't want to shut down my ability to have us request for a bed and breakfast right. and not be able to reapply for two years mm -hmm. if I don't know the proper number that we're allowed to apply mm -hmm. for. Right. So if that number can be first determined by the board mm -hmm. and be clarified, that way we can discuss real quick what we, if we want to amend it right here and then move forward. But I need to understand from the board, I guess, the language in the bylaw, and the definition at the end of the at the end of the bylaws. Yeah. Richard, can, can you? They would have to withdraw and reapply. 
or you can amend it. You can amend it. And you can amend. You can amend it to a certain you, you number. You can raise his hand and amend right up to the time you vote. Okay. okay? And then and if you, you as the board members can discuss your thoughts on the orders versus bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. etc. And I know it's very difficult. All our zoning is very difficult to understand. Uh, you guys can discuss it among yourself. And bed and breakfast is allowed in that district. Okay? And he applied for bed and breakfast. I'm trying to clarify whether it's a boarding house or not. It's a little, a little nitpicky. Mm. Okay? Uh, you basically need to discuss one, two, three rooms, okay? Mm -hmm. The original application said four bedrooms, which was impossible mm -hmm. because the owner owner yeah. occupied yeah. wouldn't yeah. have a bedroom. Yeah. Okay. So that's the reason it had to get reduced to three. Now if the board has feelings, they should all have an input. Mm -hmm. And if you get too far off whack, I'll try to help you. Thanks. Thanks for so, yeah. I, I'm very comfortable permitting giving them a special permit with two, maybe three bedrooms, as long as we list all the conditions that we've agreed. Perhaps if we do it with two, they could come back in a year to see mm -hmm. if and if we have more. That's the other option you have. They can you know, yeah. come back in a yeah. year to say, you know, we'd like to now per, you know, try for three or, you know. But I think we have a lot of conditions that we'd have to list there for me to mm -hmm. vote in favor mm -hmm. of a two to three, but absolutely I would feel comfortable doing okay. that. Yeah. Rich? Yeah. No, yes. no response, please. No. Yeah. You're Rich. closed. Rich. Yeah. I'm comfortable if we lift out the restrictions. If you, if, if we, we have yeah, restricted. Right. In how many bedrooms? Like she said, two or three. Two. Yeah. two. Uh, I feel more comfortable on two, but yeah. to see how it goes. For them. And I think I know where you stand. I, I just think that the owner occupied is is a huge part of what a bed and breakfast is, mm -hmm. and I think that the applicants themselves have demonstrated that they are not fully owner occupied with you know with a Hatfield owner occupied uh, bed and breakfast and Greenfield owner bed and breakfast and now a Deerfield owner occupied bed and breakfast it feels to me as it, and, and I feel as though that it is you know it is business and that's fine I like business in Deerfield but I like business a lot in Deerfield where they are in a commercially zoned area um, so so that's why I am I'm where I am on it I just um, I see the enforcement nightmare if it becomes a problem or if the neighbors next door change then are less favorable about what happens. Um, and I think that by setting, you know, a precedent that maybe, you know, I, I've read, the, I saw their lawyer's interpretation of it, the boarding house and that back and forth, but to me it doesn't even get that far. I think that it doesn't qualify because it's not truly owner occupied for starters. And if it did, my biggest concern is the traffic in and out um, on weekends where people, you don't realize what traffic noise is until you live next to it. Um, dirt driveways are louder, um, rocks and stuff like that. Even if it's four weekends a, a year, I just, I see um, a change in the neighborhood by having a two bedroom or three bedroom <coughs> bed breakfast next door. That's that's where I am on it. Okay. I'm not, uh, well, I won't support it. You won't support it. Okay. Okay. So, would you like. Uh, <laughs> yes. You can ask him if you want you to proceed forward. But, yeah. okay. I, don't, I don't know if I'm voting or not. I don't you're know. Not, that's you're the not thing you've got to decide yourself. for. Yeah. Yeah. All right. right. you got to decide who's voting. Right. Okay. So, who's voting now? You're an alternate. Um, and Adam's an alternate. And Adam's an alternate. So Rich will be voting. Bernie will be voting. Myself and Kathy. Yeah. Well, one of the alternates can vote. And one. then, but I, but um, and before we decide mm -hmm. what we're voting on, we want to make sure that we've decided whether it's two or three rooms and work Correct. with that with work with the applicant on that, mm -hmm. and list out all the conditions that we would want in there because mm -hmm. we need to have that before we vote. Need four positive votes to four. pass, no yes. matter what. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's drop some conditions and we'll decide on the maximum amount of rooms and then we can... Kathy, why don't you read your 
conditions? Well, these are the ones I sketched beforehand, yeah. before the meeting. But um, so, if there are additional ones, let me know. Um, that the get and, and the the applicants clarified this, but we would put this in here that the guests would only be there when Fred and or Aretha are there, and closed when they're not. They'd be closed to bed and breakfast business when they're not um, staying there, and uh, the permit would expire when. Fred or Ruitha no longer live there. And um, then the number of rooms, I, we would specify that. I had two, possibly three. And that we would have a review, an annual review, at least for the first two to three years, by a board of health or building inspector on an annual basis. And that's something we could do to help with the enforcement issues that we feel that we don't have a lot of control over. My suggestion is that the, they file a renewal application in two years to okay. extend the permit. Okay. Okay, and not just in, with the recommendation of the Board of Health and the building inspector. Okay. Okay, that way they have to formally come in back in and if they want oh, so that's to, another way of, like, okay. And policing it. And mm -hmm. if they want to expand the use or make any changes, at that time they would bring it up. Uh, the other things that I wrote down. Did you write, so renew in two years? Renew yes. the permit yep. in two years? Okay. The other thing I wrote down is, uh, I had time limit, that takes care of that, uh, that there'd be no functions, no weddings, no receptions, or anything else taking place on the site. Uh, the hours of operation, that's, you know, uh, people are coming in before 8 o'clock at night, something like that. I, and can, we, can we disagree on some of these conditions? Yeah. Uh, maybe, because I think it would be unfair to say they couldn't have parties there. Neighbors have par people have parties. Well, I'm thinking of a large wedding, and or anything like that. Hmm. Can well, I anyway. can I clarify real quick? Um, they were talking about like maybe doing like a conference with maybe other scholars, because that's what their background really, is. I don't think you can speak. Okay. I don't, I don't think you. Have, I I I don't want to be the chairman, but. I think we close the meeting to yes. discussion yeah. from other people. Yeah. Am I correct? You are correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, go. You had your. You had well, what I was trying to do was to make sure that there, uh, all of a sudden it ended up being a wedding venue or something like that because of the site up there. Okay, <coughs> um, and that just brings up more problems. Uh, I want to make sure that there's no apartment in the basement. Right. Okay. And I agree with you on restricting it to when the parents are on site only. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing is uh, uh, the fact that it not be a boarding house that, uh, because it's not allowed in a residential agricultural area. But they, they can get a permit for a bed and breakfast. Okay. And uh, those are the things that I wrote down as, as we chatted. And uh, I just think that uh, going forward, uh, I think that. Uh, I used to have a home in uh, Claremont, New Hampshire, okay, and I used to rent it out. And, you know, I wasn't on site. I'd rent the whole house. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a couple of wedding receptions there. A couple other things that happened up there that I wasn't particularly happy about. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, they, people paid the rent and the place didn't burn down. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but, you know, I just want to make sure that you don't, it, it doesn't end up being a wedding venue where you've got 300 people for a reception and they're parking someplace else and busing them in and, and everything else because it's a nice site up there. But I don't have a problem with uh, two bedrooms and uh, you know people coming in for a nice fireside chat or what have you. I don't have a problem with that. How do you feel about a conference? That's why it's a function. Function. So you want to restrict functions as a as a full yeah. restriction? Yeah, I don't want to see. Uh, I don't want you know. I don't want to see anything much larger than than, than renting two bedrooms to two couples that come in to, to for the weekend or that sort of thing. I I don't want to see a wedding venue there. It's a nice site, but I don't really think that the neighborhood's going to really want that. So are you putting down a? Um all function restriction, or is that still open for discussion? Open for discussion. I'm just yeah. listing okay. I, I anybody's ideas. Because okay. those are. Yeah. I have a question. Since um, this was hearing for the four people, 
if we accept this, we're accepting four owners of that property, and it hasn't been changed. It hasn't been changed. It can, okay. And it can't, since we closed the meeting now, and you asked if there was going to be changes, you can't change it. Well, you can reopen the meeting. You would have to reopen the meeting, but or reapply. I mean, you, you've said if we change it to two, they they have they have changed it to three formally. They okay. signed everything okay. here earlier in, the earlier in the meeting, mm -hmm. okay. and they signed it right. for three. But if we decide to change it to two, we we could. I don't know. We could. Or, but one of the restrictions you put down was if uh, they had to agree to our. Right. Right. So it's the same thing. You put down was that Fred and uh, Roswitha uh, have to be on site living there when there's any rental going on. Right. Either or. So if one uh, goes on vacation, then there can't be any renting going on. The way that that would be written. The way that is written now, you're right now. Right. Or they'd have to come back to the board. To change that. To change the perm to apply again. To amend their perm. Amend their perm. Yes. But Frank, if we if we go through these things that we agreed to, and we vote to allow the permit with uh, two bedrooms, mm -hmm. if uh, they're not satisfied at that point, they have the rights to appeal, mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> you know. I wouldn't hope they would because we're trying to do some accommodation, mm -hmm. but they do have the rights to appeal within mm -hmm. certain periods of time. Mm -hmm. And well, the neighbors have also have right. any decision. Yeah. And and mm -hmm. the neighbors and the abutters also have rights to appeal. So, so just keep that in mind. So, in my one of my concerns is the policing aspect of it, which was brought up by somebody in the uh, mm -hmm. in the uh, crowd that once all of these regulations are put into place there's no nobody there to enforce them I mean, we can agree to all agree about all <coughs> these conditions that are set forth but things can change and police the police action we'll call it police action mm. uh, <laughs> that's a poor, poor description mm. would probably be complaint driven from the neighbors from right. the neighbor right. Okay. right so that would probably that would probably be how, how somebody would find out, or uh, I completely understand the party aspect. Mm -hmm. One thing party you can't restrict is the owners of the property having a private party. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Agreed. that's that yeah. goes without saying. You can, I would guess, what I would say is you could restrict any private pro uh, parties that involve a rental of the property mm -hmm. or any private parties by orders or tenants or whatever you want to call them yes they apply mm -hmm. that would be the common sense approach because you could have two couples or three couples come and they're going to have an outing with kids from Deerfield Academy and you can restrict that 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 could be restricted and I can understand completely what you're talking about with the party thing because we have enough problems enforcing some of that now. So parties other than their own parties? Yes. As a restriction? Well, I still go back to the business. We're not clear how many people can be there. And I'm not going to go. This, this was voted on by the town of Deerfield. My understanding is two people. For me to say we can do more than that is to say the people in the town of Deerfield didn't know what they were doing. Now, maybe this is written wrong. Maybe it's written wrong, but that's the way it reads to me. And so for us to go and say that now all of a sudden they can have four or five people there, is for me to say, Town of Deerfield, your zoning laws, we're not following. And I, I, I think that as a group, we're being asked to modify a zoning law passed by the Town of Deerfield by 400 people. And the five of us, it goes back on us to make a decision about what that is. And I'll be honest with you, I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm uncomfortable with that. Right. If, if that's written wrong, then yeah. it needs to be clarified. But Well, that's a function of the zoning board. Zoning board of appeals. That I hate to say this, but So, Bernie, you're saying that the, w the way you interpret that is you get four owners, right? And that you could only have two guests, and over two guests would be in 
would violation. be a violation right. of of the other zoning laws, right. and that we shouldn't we shouldn't, as a matter of of law, allow a special permit that conflicts with another law. That's right. That's where you stand. On That's that. where I stand. I just, I'm just trying to understand it. I, I mean, I'm out before that part of it. I see the point there. I read the decision. I read that, and I, I mean, um, I think it's you know, I think it. From from what I heard from some historians, was that you know, 35 or 40 years ago there was this boarding issue was an issue mm -hmm. with uh, with the university, and that's why mm -hmm. they they put this zoning on it, and that was the the uh, spirit of the law, so to speak. And parts of it have been updated, and right. other parts have not, not. so right. it's right. a little incongruent in some areas. Right. Well, here's the other issue. Suppose they got two singles that came to rent. You're going to allow two people. It's two rooms. So, so you could put on as a restriction, I guess, total number of people in the house. That's what. You, what that's what you. I, I did this, and I think what's going to happen here, not to say that this is going to happen, but I, I have a feeling that we're going to pass this. We're going to get a lawyer's note saying that this interpretation is wrong, and I don't want to go there. I don't want to go into lawyers and all that other stuff. Well, I think that you know why. Why, if I was to vote, I would vote no. Is because that they uh, it's been demonstrated that it's not uh, that the tra traffic issues are going to change the neighborhood, and that it was uh, well, the are not truly going. There is another answer. If you're all uncomfortable, or enough people are uncomfortable with the vote to do, you can postpone this meeting for a week or two weeks. And we can get a legal opinion from town council. I mean, that's I, that's what can happen. I mean, I think it's up to the chair to call a vote no, or not. I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you what you can do. It's good to know yeah. the options. Yeah. Yeah. What to do. Yeah. I mean, what I, you can do. That's an option. Yeah, and, and by the same token, when we first started, it was going to be fix the downstairs and put a. Uh, a I wasn't there for okay, that. Okay, a kitchen in there. So that threw up a red flag to me. Not to be critical, but you know what? I know what the laws are. We had one person had to remove their kitchen because they were going to put in an apartment. And when I heard that... Two. 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 When I heard that, that made me a little bit suspicious of what was going on. I, I'm going to be honest, that's how I felt. And I'm, I'm still concerned about that because who's going to enforce this? And the next thing we know, we've got an apartment in there. And... Now we'll come with another president. Someone saying, "Well, they got an apartment and they got a way." They took that out, correct? <coughs> yes, right. but oh, that's just what led you to it, right? So we could have a situation where this goes on, and I'm, uh, it's the law is all based on precedent. And if we put something through, then basically you have a legal precedent from in the town of Deerfield about zoning laws. And like I said, they voted on this; and they were going to enforce it, or we're not going to. And they asked for a special permit. Well, I have a concern. We've had voices of opinion, and it's one of the questions that ask: is it beneficial to the town, correct? If the precedent, if it's, if a precedent is set, hasn't that been set if we have a couple others already? Um, yeah, I, that I think happen. they're under different circumstances. I think, um, you know, I don't, you know, I think that this is um, a different circumstance. And, I, you know, I, um, the other, um, the one that, that there was an issue, I think, was because things were, were handled um, handled incorrectly, maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago, Richard, or 10 well, years ago. one of them is but, uh, less than 10 I, years. I just... Two, both of them are less than 10 years. I think where the precedent comes into play is if we, if someone else in the future says, well, you know, I want to have one on, you know, Upper Road, just like the one they have on Lower Road, then I think it makes people, you know, it's it's a harder. Well, so. I realize that there was one on Lower Road also. Right. That that got abandoned when the people bought the house five years so ago. So we make the decision case by case. I see. Yeah. Just Frank and follow up to what Dick was talking about. Uh, if we were to draft a preliminary thought and didn't vote to postpone our decision for two weeks pending council's review mm -hmm. to see if it met muster or it didn't meet muster 
and then we could meet and then we could either uh, decide to grant the permit or uh, to deny it. Yeah. And uh, if that's what the board wants to do, yeah, and, and I was that waiting. would make Bernie more comfortable. I, think. I was waiting for everybody to finish speaking, and I and and I wanted to say that I'm not comfortable with it either because it's like fuzzy math. We don't know the correct numbers, and it's my opinion that we need somebody to clarify that for us before we can make a decision. I, I think know. that you're, in my opinion, and my recommendation to you is to do that. Yes. Yeah. That that makes the most I sense to me. Postpone the meeting for. Yeah. One or two weeks. Right. Whenever you come up on your schedule, the people can meet. Right. So and the protocol, it would not, we don't need to, con to draft continue. anything now. We uh, just, no, just continue we, the meeting for, yeah. for a, uh, yeah, because we need a to, lack of information. Wait, right. Which doesn't trigger their on our part, no. like automatic granting no. because you're, you're, you're requesting more information. Right. Okay. Right. You're requesting interpretation of the zoning bylaws. Yeah. From our town legal yeah. council. Yeah, there's enough concern here amongst us about the numbers and, and Write all the that rest. Write what you want. Yes. Okay. And I will personally submit it, take a call town council. Okay. And get a written legal opinion. Yeah. Excellent. And, and that could that could help us to rewrite some of this someday to clarify too. Need to rewrite the whole book. <laughs> because it's it, yeah. I think getting the legal opinion, mm -hmm. because everybody on the board is relatively new, mm -hmm. getting the legal opinion, I think, would absolutely solidify the way you vote. Yeah. Okay? And if it's not, as if we want to set the expectation for time frame, usually within a couple weeks we could get legal? I can definitely get the legal opinion in two weeks. Okay. okay. I can probably get it in a week, but I just... Get Whatever your schedule case. is. <coughs> yeah, I know we November have another meeting. first we have another one. Um, What's the date today? November like first, the board's meeting for two different applications. Yeah, I have a question about that, Mr. Chair. I mean, we can all address it after. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, let's figure out if we could add this to that. If you want to, yeah. if you want to go with the November first date, mm -hmm. you can get clarification from the town council. It can be the first thing on the agenda. Okay. To vote on the issue. Mm -hmm. Not rehash everything. Not rehash yeah. everything. Would mm -hmm. we have to have the uh, the every the conditions, everything listed? You've got to list the conditions you want before we yeah. go to town council. Before you go, yes, absolutely. You need to list everything. List the town council. This is what we were going to vote of on. Number rooms, all of that. Yep. This is what we were going to vote on. Okay. And this, we want legal opinion if this matches the zoning bylaws. And that very simply is. Very favor, very much in favor of everybody, everybody's whether you're opposed or for mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it interest. clarifies it legally. So I think yeah. what, what you should probably do now is list the opinions, read on them. What do you mean read Don't on them? Don't read them to okay. the audience. Okay. And then say, I'm, we're submitting this for clarification with town council. And then when you vote on the thing, it's very simple, come back. Town Council has said this, and this okay. is what we're voting on. A new point on here. And at that point, you can amend. Uh, you could do slight amendments to it once you, once you completely get the bylaw uh, addressed mm -hmm. and what you can and can't do. So I would just make a, a preliminary list for the Town Council. Uh, what. Well, the one thing you have to decide tonight is two bedrooms, three bedrooms. You can't decide for two bedrooms. You can, you could say now, I'm just throwing this out, you could say now we're going to do it for two bedrooms, but you got to go back to the petitioner and say, do you agree to reducing this to two if you go with two? That's all I'm saying. Or we can admit I'm it at the next you what meeting. To do. To if two. you send it to town council, I will have to submit it in three bedrooms. Okay. Okay. Because that's what the petitioners asked for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I might like to make a motion that we open the, the hearing back up for mm -hmm. a limited discussion. 
for the purpose of asking the petitioner if they would accept two bedrooms instead of the three. And I think once we get the answer to that, we'll close the hearing off sure. and postpone the decision until the 1st of November. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, at the meeting on the 1st of November, and further we will discuss sending a, a list of preliminary restrictions mm -hmm. uh, down to the town council to make sure that everything is done that's laid out is legal. And what happened if something isn't legal, they will pinpoint it for us, mm -hmm. and then at that point uh, we will meet the 1st of November and we can decide whether to approve the permit or approve the with those conditions or modify the condition mm -hmm. and what have you. It's the best we can do. I second that. Okay. I can, if Kathy writes this up, either you or she, Kathy, come see me, and I can get the town council on the phone mm -hmm. and fax them over those conditions. Okay. And if you have any other input in the, that you want to tell the town council or something, we can do that. Mm -hmm. So one of the board members is involved in okay. getting that back. Okay, so I'll open the meeting up again and propose to you two bedrooms. Are you, agree are you agreeable to that? Yeah. You're okay with two sure. bedrooms, so okay. thank you. That's fine. Okay. Close the meeting again. Um, and do you want to yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. I think we are close. Close the meeting again. Okay. Um, and so I need signed. to come up with the list of conditions that we're going to put with right this. now. Mm -hmm. Right now. Right. <laughs> So I read. Can I just cross it out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm yeah. going to go one at a time. Did you initial it? Yes. That we're going to. These are the conditions that are going to be on this. Yeah. That's where yeah. the yeah. council yeah. looked over. Yeah. Only yeah. guests yeah. there yeah. when Fred and or Rosita yeah. yeah. are there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, expires yeah. when Fred or Rosita no longer live there. The number of rooms. Two. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one thing that I. We can discuss either putting it up or again in two years. Or expires in two years. Or, okay. or we could say review by Board of Health or Building Inspector on, a, on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, that's a separate thing. If that's a separate thing? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, do you think it's, do you think review by Board of Health or Building Inspector on an annual basis is a good condition? I do. I think it, I think it should be. Just for the safety. And mm -hmm. What about the ex, uh, renew in two years? Yeah, it expires at, at the end okay. of the three-year period. And, and I would just put on that building inspector note that um, that if they need to, if they have a uh, issue that they want to be addressed by another building agency, either the state building inspector or the fire marshal or something else, that, that they have the authority to do that. And if they're not allowed to enter the property, then they would. Uh, That's not. Is that um, is that covered? You can't do that. Can you cover the building, the building what, official? What probably should be done is any complaints should be forwarded by the building inspector to the ZBA. I see. And any complaints, the police department should follow, forward any complaints to the ZBA and any complaints the building inspector should be forwarded by the ZBA. And the ZBA at any time can take, ask the action to be taken if they find those things. We, we have the authority to revoke a permit? The ZBA has authority to recall a permit for violation of that. That is correct. I see. So, for example, if they disappear and they're in Germany and you find out the place is being rented for a bed and breakfast for two months or something with them not there, you can recall that. The ZBA can take that up at a at a hearing and ask that their permit be suspended. I see. Yep. That's pretty easy. Okay, so let me just make sure because I don't want to. Okay. So board then, these, review yeah. by Board of Health or Building Inspector on annual basis with any complaints going to the ZBA. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Where do I put this part about any police complaints? I would just put any complaints, any complaints. be forwarded to the ZBA. Any complaints any. be forwarded okay. to the ZBA. Okay. Okay. Um, and the complaints okay. may be forwarded to the ZBA. I'll clarify that. <coughs> you don't have to write it down. Okay. I'll clarify that. The only complaints that would be forwarded to the ZBA is written complaints. Okay. 
written. Okay. Okay. Um, let's figure out the verbiage we want to use with uh, the conditions on parties. So just no parties by guests. Or that could be covered with what the neighbors are watching. You know, if the neighbors have a problem with what's going on, they can alert the police mm -hmm. department and we'll find out. And that I would just put the put a restriction in uh, mm -hmm. is you know, any um, <coughs> entertainment, you know, including parties and rental of the property would be you know, or or you could put, you know, bed and breakfast only, no it's not an event, you know. Right. Yeah. Not an event venue. Not an event, not event venue, and uh, but the uh, the people who own and live at the property are allowed to have parties. Right. So I, you know, I guess we'll get feedback from town council if that language doesn't. That is correct. Not an event venue. Yeah. The town council will okay. review okay. your requirements and they will amend them as they feel necessary. Are there any others that I missed that were conditions? Yes. That, okay. It expires with them selling the property. We I, I, have that. That. I, I have that. that. Yeah, right. And they got a renewal in two years. And the conditions and the expiration should be recorded at the registry of deeds. What, if it's passed? If it's once you vote on it, okay. once you grant it, it should be recorded at the registry of deeds so when the next buyer comes along, they don't go, whoops, we could have a bed and breakfast permit like they did to me once already. Okay. Last year. Okay. Good? Yeah, I, you know, the things I'd written down was, uh, you know, restricted to the parents on site. You got that covered. The no apartment in the basement? Did you put that there? I feel like that's... The no apartment in the basement is covered by... Okay, fine. The by zoning bylaw because it's okay. restricted to single family only. Okay. The septic system that's only supports four. the four bedrooms that are there. They would have to go to the Board of Health, which would report back to the board, should they be adding a fifth room. The kitchen would not be allowed by the Board of Health, and the building inspector would have to issue a permit for that, and a plumbing inspector, so you're, you're covered 100% because we're pretty well coordinated in that. Okay. So, Kathy, you want to read, read back through and make sure everybody understands? One more time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Be happy to. Okay, so uh, I might reorder these. That's fine. Um, I expect you to for more before we... We expect you to proofread it. And yeah, and make it so it makes better sense so the council will have an easier time. Write it so I can read it. <laughs> okay. Um, they only will have guests when Fred and or Roswitha are there. Right, Fred uh, and, not or. Well, why would it matter? Why would both have to be there? Well, because if one goes on, I mean, that's that's up for discussion. You, you don't want and or. You either want and or. Or you want, or you can't have. You, you wouldn't want to have both in any. In in my opinion, you, you would. I would just have no problem if either one of the resident owners were there, was there. I think you're trying to say you want them both present. Yeah, I mean, if the husband is not in good shape, well, would you want to have somebody in there with? I just feel like that's diving too deep. Well, I don't but think it is. I think if you're looking, you know, we have to look at the welfare of the people we're going to put in there, and if you just say that, then, then. You know, he might be bedridden, and then he's we're we're fitting the the letter of what we're asking for, but yet he can't, he won't be able to take care of those people. And I, you know, I think the truth, the truth, the the only way you can legally apply for this special permit is if it's a owner occupied dwelling. You that is a requirement. Right. That's why. But both of them are owners. I understand, right. but, 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 but we have, but there's right. four owners, right. and I think fifty percent of the owners need to occupy the dwelling. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I just, no. I mean, <laughs> I go back to you know how many owner occupied yeah. bed and breakfasts yeah. can one person own, and and that's and that's that's what I, you know, well, one unless you got a duplex. I think that we, I think one of the principles should be present when it's rented whether it be she and her husband or her or her husband. That's no, because I the thing about it is, uh, I'm not sure 
their age, but I know I'm 72 years old. One of these days, they're going to put me down there at Brookside, right? And somebody, you know, I wouldn't want my wife not to be able to rent it if she was doing a bed and breakfast. Yeah. I think Bob's got a good point. Yeah, I, I just... I agree. And or, and and or can become uh, well, two different things, so... so. Well, right, but he's saying he's fine with or. Yeah, all, yeah. and put so down I, or, I, yeah. you know, whatever the board well, feels. That's but, subject you know. to discussion in the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to down. discuss yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. You can discuss that okay. next okay. meeting. Okay, expires yeah. when Fred... I hate to even say this, or, and, okay, or Ross Reetha no longer live there. Right. Well, mm -hmm. I'll clarify that. Okay. When one of them is no longer on the deed, uh, two of them are no longer on the deed, okay, then they're not, uh, then they're not, uh, then they're not owner occupied. If one passes away, mm -hmm. the other one is still there, the one that passes away will be off the deed, so you, you can't take it away from her. Right. Okay. Bob, Bob is. Good. Yeah, I understand. Right, right, right. That's very easy to understand. Because I didn't know. I'm sorry. I just I didn't know if you were using and or. So we've got to use just one. That's what I was. Okay. Um, reviewed by the Board of Health or Building Inspector on an annual basis. Uh, we're two rooms. Are what we're saying. Um, any written complaints should be forwarded to the ZBA. Uh, we need. To it will be up for renewal in two years, i.e. it expires, I guess, in two years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not an event venue. Yep. Yeah. You good with those? Okay. So is everybody happy? Mm -hmm. So do you, would you like a, a motion to send motion, that down yes. to the yes. council? Make a so motion we'll to send those uh, recommendations to town council for review. Yeah. Oh, well. Are you making the motion? Yeah. Uh, there's still discussion on it. Piece. We never... Is, did you put a maximum number of people for her to decide? No, rooms. I, I, bedroom, I thought that, that we wanted, each and I thought we wanted town council to give us a. Well, each bedroom qualifies for two people. I understand. By size. I understand. And. So you're talking four people then? Four people. Totally. So, you had a motion. You had a uh, I'm not comfortable with that. Well, you, well, you got to clarify that for me. No, that's what I said that. I said two that's people. Why you put that on there? But I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with four people. I'm comfortable with two because my understanding is two people plus plus the owners. So if there's four people in there, they can have up to six, and they can have two boarders. That's what we're. That's we're sending it to town council. council. That's what I'm trying to yeah. find that's out. That's what town council is going to clarify. So you you made the motion, or did you make the motion? I thought I did. Okay. Okay. And you well, second? I'll second okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is, we're not voting to pass it right now. We're voting I understand to it, but I, I, I want the okay. town council to look at that and tell us what that means. Right, I, I, just, I don't want right. to, I don't want to get, get back the answer, uh, an answer, you know, get back something that's not clear. We're going through this again. Right. No, we're, we're right. going to do this we're gonna get right. a clear. We're going to get a clear answer. Really? Yes. <laughs> you can rely on Kathy getting that. <laughs> okay. He doesn't believe so. me. All no, that's not you, Kathy. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not questioning you. All those in favor of sending what we just wrote to town council? Yeah. All right. Opposed? Okay, we'll send this to town council. And are we going to, uh, are we going to also set the date? Uh, November 1st. November, November 1st. 1st. 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. So add it to the agenda for yeah. that meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to notify that probably so she mm -hmm. uh, puts it part of the posting. Right. Don't worry, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like that's an interesting point. Do we have enough days in advance to get it to the November first posting? To the council? No, 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 it no. doesn't have to be re advertised. It doesn't have to be re advertised. No, okay. No, no, no. Okay. We're, we're, we're okay. The public right. hearing is closed. Right. Yeah. The hearing has been closed. Yes, okay. The hearing has been closed. Okay. You gotta make a motion to adjourn. Well, we have we have some mail. Oh, so so we're we closed. So we have to close for this. this yes. meeting. We have to close what we're doing. This. I make a motion that we close on this the application on the application. Correct. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Meeting is closed for the bed and breakfast application. May I say something? Uh, if it's closed, it's closed, because I would like to say something, yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. closed. Yeah, it's closed, it's closed. It's closed. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I can't say it. Mm -hmm. Just private.
Okay, so next is to review any mail. Good night. Good night. Good night. I would have just to say thank you for the buyers of what we have done. Because that's a mess. It's 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 a mess. No, it's not for you. My husband and I will not be able to attend on the first. Our daughter's going to be the first. The hearing's closed, so we're not going to take any more public comments. No, no, it's not okay. comments. All right. I was just informing you. We'll okay. be here for that reason. Okay, thanks. Enjoy your time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it's to Kalachewski. Yeah, yeah. Uh, new mail, the only new mail that we have was uh, a letter we had forwarded to town administrator, Deerfield Select Board, and Zoning Board of Appeals from an Ava Gibbs. Um, and it has to do with what she watched on television at the last um, at the last meeting that we had. So uh, this this will be public record, and anybody that wants to look at it can. Sure. That was the only that was the only new mail that we had to go over. Anybody has any other business? No. I make a motion we close our meeting. Second. Second. Oh, second. Okay. Second. Okay. <laughs> okay.